I'm Alex Paulton. and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, I just wanted to talk about how time on the internet works. You know, because uh, people talk all the time about, uh, oh, I don't need a watch because I got the time on my phone. And um, I just thought to ask, do you know where the time on your phone comes from? Do you know why it is accurate as it is? Uh, Yes, uh, a smartphone has got an electronic uh, resonator in it, a quartz crystal. Um, nowadays, you're seeing more and more uh, silicon resonators. But essentially, you've got a timing circuit inside of a phone. But uh, that just lets it keep time. How does it know what time it is? In fact, how does anything on the Internet know what time it is? And why is that important? Now, I did a video uh, a few months ago maybe more, but I did a video earlier about why is time important, and um, I talked about different things, navigation and the like, but in this case, I'll talk specifically about the internet. Now, the time on your phone um, comes from the internet, and the internet has to maintain accurate time all the way across. Um, the easiest way to talk about it is with a whiteboard. So, here we have a whiteboard here, and uh, the way to think of um, time on the internet, the best way is to think of signals. Like back in the old days when you had a modem and you had a computer and you had another computer, right? And they were communicating through the modem, right? These computers talked to the modem and each of them did... In the old-timey days, they called it a beep and a rush. They would go, psh, 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 and basically what would happen is these two machines would negotiate with each other in what's called a digital handshake, and they would agree on timing, okay? And the reason that they had to agree on timing is if you think about it, a digital signal is just a string of ones and zeros, right? So <clears throat> if all I've got is a string of ones and zeros, right? And it's just a stream of ones and zeros. How do I know where the digital word starts? How do I know what is the block of digital text? So if I've just got a, a continuous stream of ones and zeros, unless each computer knows where the mark starts, it's just a stream of gibberish. So in order to understand the stream of ones and zeros, both computers have to be completely in time sync, okay? And any difference in time is called jitter. And jitter actually was a big issue in the, 80, in the early 80s and 90s when um, CD was coming out because music, streamed music, was the only high-speed digital signal that anybody really used in those days, and you could hear distortion in an audio signal. Whereas when it comes to straight digital information, your page doesn't download as fast or other issues happen with the information. It takes longer to figure things out. So only by having accurate time between computers can you have effective communication. Now, how does that time come? Because how did, if you turn on your cell phone today, it doesn't go beep, and synchronize with the network, your phone is always synchronized with the network. Everything connected to the internet and the cloud is synchronized by virtue of being connected because the servers actually provide the time signal for everyone communicating with it. And um, obviously, we're talking about the Earth, right? So that means you have to have the accurate time in New York, you have to have the accurate time in Tokyo, Tokyo, and you have to have the accurate time in Auckland, right? So that means, and, and the thing is, is these places are communicating with each other, right? So that means the time sync has to be accurate all around the planet, compensating for the different places that they are on the earth, right? So how does the internet actually accomplish that? With GPS satellites. One of the things I had mentioned in my last video on time was the importance of the GPS satellite today, because essentially all a GPS satellite is is an atomic clock in orbit, 
well, multiple atomic clocks in orbit, and uh, machines on the ground do the Doppler and time dilation math, mathematics to determine your position on the Earth by triangulating the uh, shift between multiple satellites. Now, since those satellites are broadcasting uh, space and location compensated time signal at all times, uh, what happens is you got the GPS satellite here, Or GLONASS, which is the Russian system, or um, I believe it's Galileo is the European system, but they're all just atomic clocks up in orbit, and the better systems can see more or less of these satellites and different signals. Now, that time signal comes down to an antenna on the server building, all right? So the GPS signal gets beamed down to the Earth, Antennas on the server uh, locations pick up that GPS signal, and then they integrate it into their timing cards. Either they're a timing card or a blade. It could be an entire rack, depending on the size of the facility. But there's always a clock reference in every server that is linked to the GPS satellite network. Now, that means it's also an expensive um, device to actually be able to synchronize time between servers. And um, frankly, there was just been some news in that space. A couple of Facebook engineers just released a time card uh, open standard uh, design so that individuals can now make uh, time cards for servers for as low as $300 if they're using a crystal oscillator and as low as $2,000 using an off-the-shelf atomic clock because they're not that expensive anymore, although, I mean, a couple thousand is still expensive, but cheaper than a Rolex. Uh, so essentially, the GPS sends the signal to the servers and then the servers synchronize with one another. And they're also all using the same time chop. So GPS satellites send signals to, well, everyone, and antennas in the server farms pick up that signal and use it to synchronize the time in their specific time devices that they have at each and every facility. And all of these systems all coordinating to make sure they're all on the same time is how everything can stay synchronized so that uh, we can communicate. So time is still important, and if we lost the ability to uh, use the GPS satellite system or the GLONASS or the Galileo because of, say, for example, a Kepler space debris event that rendered orbit useless for the next couple of centuries, um, we would lose time and we'd have to come up with a secondary system or civilization would literally come to a halt. So that's how the time gets onto your phone. GPS satellite broadcasts to a server farm, and that server farm uses that signal to synchronize the time of all the devices that are connected to it. So that was my little talk about uh, internet time. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And please subscribe. It really helps.